Hello, this is Jonathan with Robotus, and today I'll be teaching you all the ways you can daisy chain Dynamix actuators. Daisy chaining is one of the most important features offered by Dynamixels, making it as easy as possible to connect multiple actuators together and control them simultaneously. While daisy chaining is usually as simple as just connecting your Dynamixels together, there are a few important things you need to know to ensure successful Dynamixel operation, as well as a few additional, more complex methods of daisy chaining that can allow you to create much more complex designs for your Dynamixel project. Let's start off with a demonstration of simple daisy chaining using Dynamixel actuators. As you can see, Simply connecting the actuators together is all that's needed in order to utilize the daisy chaining feature of Dynamixel actuators. However, there are a couple of important things to watch out for when setting up even this simple daisy chain solution. Let's take a quick look at some of the most common issues that can occur in these types of daisy chains and how we can resolve them. In this example, both actuators operated perfectly when connected on their own, but failed once they're both connected to the network at the same time. This behavior indicates that both Dynamixels share an overlapping ID number. Each Dynamixel actuator requires a unique ID on the Dynamixel network in order to communicate successfully. By default, all new Dynamixels are configured with ID 1, so whenever you receive a new Dynamixel, it's important to connect it to Dynamixel Wizard and give it a new, unique ID number before installing it in your Dynamixel project. When you replace an existing Dynamix in your project, it's also important to ensure that you use the same ID with the replacement actuator. Another common issue that occurs in these types of daisy chains looks like this. If your system behaves like that when you're trying to run it, it means your Dynamixel system isn't getting enough current to support all the connected actuators. In order to resolve this issue, we just need to add an additional power input to our daisy chain and ensure that the entire chain has adequate current. Adding an SMPS and either a U2D2 power hub board or SMPS to Dynamixel to our daisy chain ensures that we can provide adequate power to every connected servo. In fact, Robotus officially recommends adding an additional power input every 5 to 8 servos, depending on the specifics of your Dynamixel system. Daisy chains don't always need to be a single continuous connection. In fact, Dynamixels support the use of distributed hub boards. Dynamixels can be connected to these types of hubs in order to split the Dynamixel network into multiple, still connected, subsections. But remember, when connecting Dynamixels in this way, it's important to supply adequate power, as configurations like this often result in specific subsections of the Dynamixel network requiring a high amount of current to operate. Now that we've gone over some basic implementations of daisy chaining, let's look at a few more advanced options. So far, we've only connected Dynamixels with compatible operating voltages and serial communication protocols. But Dynamixels also support mixed protocol or voltage networks as well. Connecting mixed serial protocols is as easy as incorporating Robotus' Dynamixel communication bridge into your network. Using the communication bridge allows direct connection of Dynamixels utilizing different serial protocols without any other additional network considerations. In fact, multiple communication bridges can be integrated into a Dynamixel network to control multiple segments of mixed protocols. Connecting Dynamixels with mixed input voltages requires some additional steps in order to prevent damage to your actuators. In order to connect Dynamixels with mixed input voltages, the first step is to disconnect the VN line of your chosen Dynamixel cable. The VN line on all Dynamixel cables is connected to pin 2, in the middle of TTL cables, and the second pin from the right on RS-485 Dynamixel cables. Be sure that the connection is severed completely in order to avoid damage to your Dynamixel actuator, and that any exposed wires are safely trimmed to avoid damage to you. After doing this, you can connect the two Dynamixels with different operating voltages to one another using the modified cable. Now, you'll need to add two power supplies to the Dynamixel system, one for each operating voltage. When connected in this way, 
Each section of the Dynamixel network has its own dedicated power supply, allowing the use of different operating voltages in each disconnected section. This technique can even be combined with the Dynamixel communication bridge to create Dynamixel networks comprised of mixed communication protocols and voltages working together. That's all there is to know about daisy chaining Dynamixel actuators. If you'd like to learn more about our actuators or their connectors, or you'd just like to take another look at some of the example diagrams featured in this video, check out our online e-manual. Documentation on all of our open source projects and libraries is always available on our official GitHub. And if you'd like to show off your Dynamixel creations or just want to chat with other Dynamixel users, feel free to pay a visit to the Robotus community forum. This has been Jonathan with Robotus, and I look forward to building more with you soon.